Please greet one another as brothers and sisters in Christ as we welcome you to Zion Lutheran Church this morning for Confirmation Sunday. Our order of service is Divine Service Setting 1 on page 151. And we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro to as printed in your bulletin. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. His miracles and the judgments he uttered. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the fifth chapter of Acts. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. And when they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theudas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed. And all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to throw them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle reading is from the first chapter of 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the, the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, attaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Speak to God. Will those who are able please rise for the Alleluia? Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, 
receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails, and place my finger into the marks of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess together the words of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward for the object lesson. Yes, our guests are welcome to come down as well. If you're visiting today, please come down. And that's fine. You may sit here on the steps if you wish. That's fine too, right by the pulpit. Very good. Come on. We're all here. Let's start. Today is a special day. Do you know what, what day it is? It's not Easter. It's the second Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after Easter, which is the second Sunday of Easter. Confirmation. Do you know what confirm means? What? Okay, you want to try? To confirm something, to make something more firm, to re reestablish, to uh, make it more firm. We'll just, let's keep it simple. And, but with confirmation, uh, the main thing about confirmation, though, is to confess, to confess the Christian faith. And a confirmant is someone who's been trained in the catechism and to, to confess the holy Christian faith. And so, uh, when, do you think, when do you think that begins, learning the Christian faith? When does that start? Does it, okay, because confirmation, technically our confirmations are in seventh and eighth grade. But my object lesson, you're kind of my object lesson. And uh, we did this last night. And I'll tell you what they did last night after I ask you similar or the same questions. Can you confess the faith? And for instance, for instance, what we did, uh, let's, let's just go, just by being here, you are learning to confess the faith. Just by being here and listening. You, you're paying attention. I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to find out if you're, how, how well you're paying attention. Um, I want you to complete this phrase. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of... Who can fill that in? You have the words of... 
Anybody? Eternal life. Eternal life. There you go. Good. Thanks, Seek. Uh, let's do another one now. Guys, maybe I'll call on you. If I go like this, you just say it. If you want to raise your hand, you can do that too. <laughs> All right, here's one. Uh, in fact, this one uh, we didn't even say today. I did it last night, though. Uh, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before... There you go. Connor, where did you learn that? That's the Nicene Creed. You didn't learn it. You didn't learn it in midweek. You don't do the Nicene. You learned it here. Just by showing up. Just by being here as we confess the faith. Week after week in uh, our worship services here, the divine service here. Uh, sometimes we don't, we don't do the creeds. It's true in the vespers and things like that. But see, you knew that. Um, any others? Let's see. How... Uh, let's do this one again. Let, we'll go back to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the, the communion of saints. Do you know what the communion of saints are? Here, here's my point. Here, my point is this. Sometimes we confess what we don't really understand. Do you know that pastors still confess things they don't understand? I believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do I understand the Trinity? No, I don't. I don't understand how the Father can be God, the Son can be God, the Holy Spirit can be God, or is God, and yet there are not three gods, but one God. Thank you. Um, and uh, you get the idea. We're learning to confess, to say with our lips, what God has done for us. We confess it's true. We confess that we are poor, miserable, what? Sinners. sinners. We are poor, miserable sinners, and yet God has had mercy on us and uh, has sent his son to die for us, to forgive our sins. Well, guys, I'm very proud, really, of your mother's your fathers, your grandpas and grandmas for bringing you to church, Sunday school, midweek, for teaching you the faith, to teaching you uh, the most important thing in life, that even though we are sinners, we are forgiven because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Now, okay, Lydia, do you have a question? Um, also, I'm going to have a little bit of a Yes, that's neat that they are here. Yes. Grandpas and grandmas are important parts of our faith, too. They can encourage us, too, in the faith and encourage you to go to church, Sunday school, midweek, and, and so forth. Okay? Now, let's stand up. You're going to confess the faith again. It's true. A lot of times we say Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That is a great confession of faith. But during the season of Easter, remember, it's Confirmation Day, and it's the second Sunday of Easter, we're going to confess something else. And... We say, the pastor says, Christ is risen. And what do the people say? He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Or alleluia. Uh, by the way, here, part of, part of learning. Oh, I forgot to tell you my little story, and I'm, I'm, I'll do that now. Sometimes we confess what we don't understand. True story. My first cousin, when she was a little girl, did not like those little round things, green round things that are called peas. And she asked, in all seriousness, with a straight face, she said, remember, she did not like peas. How come the pastor at the end of the service always says, ask God to give us peas? <laughs> she was serious. Now, here's my point, though. My point is, it is true. It is true. Sometimes we teach our children words they do not understand, like the communion of saints. That's a big, those are big words. Communion. Okay? Uh, but even peas, ch a child may not understand peace and think of it as peas. So now we're going to say this. Uh, we're going to say it twice with, the, twice with the children, once with the congregation. Ha oh, I was going to ask you, what does hallelujah mean? Does anybody know what hallelujah means? Okay, there's another word. See, we learn these words. We don't even know what they mean, but don't give up. You'll learn them sooner or later. Hallelujah is Hebrew. It means praise Yahweh, praise the Lord. Let's do it now. Are you ready? Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 
you know what? Here, let's, we should have practiced this. We've got seven Sundays of Easter. It goes, he has risen indeed, hallelujah. Let's try that again. <laughs> okay, hey, we'll, we'll keep practicing it. That's part of the confession. We don't learn the confession all in one day, do we? And now, together with moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas in the congregation, Christ is risen. He is risen Thank you for your help and your kind attention. And, Olivia, oh, by the way, I should explain this. This is a little, this is a little thing that... You take them off, that you peel them off, and you can make your own Easter scene on the other side. You can be a little bit creative, but the characters are Jesus, Mary Magdalene, an angel, and so forth. Olivia, could you help pass, <clears throat> pass those out? Thank you very much. And when you get back to your, uh, go back to your pews, then when you get your uh, thing, <laughs> your, your gift, and help us sing the next hymn. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your help and your kind attention. Oh, did you run out? There's Elena. No, no, two hours. Two hours. She said, thank you. Lights out. Okay. Thank you. I just said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? She was just. Okay. Take one for your brother. Oh. Please pray with me. Let me be thine forever, my faithful God and Lord. Let me forsake thee never, nor wander from thy word. Lord, do not let me waver, but give me steadfastness, and for such grace forever, thy holy name I'll bless. Amen. Dear family and friends of Charlotte, of course, today is Confirmation Day. Like any other day, it is a day to celebrate what God has done for us. It is also, like other days, a day to confess the faith passed down to us from God himself through the Holy Scriptures, through the Old Testament prophets, through the, uh, through the apostles in the New Testament. Also from grandpas and grandmas, moms and dads, family and friends who have encouraged you in the faith. It is a day for all of us to recall our baptism and to rejoice in the salvation that God has given to us. But you know what? To step back just for a moment and to appreciate what God has done for us, I want you to consider what it would be like to live without 
the forgiveness of sins, to live without the assurance of life and salvation. Apart from the forgiveness of sins, we are left in our sin. In our first birth, the text talks about being born again. Oh, we got something wrong because we had to do it again, or God had to do it again. In our first birth, we are born in sin. We are spiritually blind, dead, and enemies of God. The Bible says, surely, certainly, I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. So we do need to be born again. We do need a new birth. And just like our first birth, the second birth is, is not of ourself. It has to be given to us. Whenever someone is born, uh, you're born not of your decision. You're born as a result of something else. The new birth is a result of God and God giving us new birth through water and the Spirit. But the human heart, the human mind, without the Word of God is hardened. It cannot believe. It refuses to believe. Imagine the ten apostles trying to convince Thomas that Jesus had risen from the dead. Ooh, ten eyewitnesses trying to convince Thomas. Uh, they could, what could they have said? Th Thomas... Remember, the last time into Jerusalem, Jesus told us three times, plainly, he told us that he was going to be captured, handed over to the high priests, that he would be spit upon, mocked, beaten, crucified. And Thomas, don't you remember that he said on the third day he would rise from the dead? Can you, tr can you imagine trying to argue or to convince Thomas to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? They might have said, Thomas, you heard these promises too. Thomas, here we are, ten apostles, are you calling us liars? Three of those apostles could have played the transfiguration card. If you remember, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus shined like the sun and Moses and Elijah appeared to them also. But that was only Peter, James, and John. But they were swore to secrecy. Jesus said, don't you tell anybody what you have seen until I rise from the dead. That's in Matthew 17. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. But now, now they could play that transfiguration card Thomas, we saw with our own eyes, Jesus shine like the sun, and we heard a voice from heaven. The voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The voice from heaven said, listen to him. Thomas, listen, listen, listen. Thomas's stubborn refusal to believe reminds us of our own spiritual condition until we come into contact with the Word of God. The hymn that we just sang was about doubting Thomas. And it included this verse. His, Thomas's reasoned certainties denied that one could live when one had died until his fingers read like braille the markings of the spear and nail. It is true, Thomas could not believe by his own reason or strength, just like you and I could not believe by our own reason or strength that Jesus is our Savior. But the Holy Spirit has called us by the gospel, enlightened us with his gifts, sanctified, and he has kept us in the one true faith. We have an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. It is kept in heaven for us by God's power who are being guarded through faith for a salvation to be revealed at the last time. What does that mean? We have an inheritance. It won't pass away. The promise is, yes, the forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. But it's being, we are being guarded by God's power through faith. Whenever there's faith, there's got to be means to sustain that faith. We call them the means of grace. The means of grace keep our faith alive, keep our faith in Christ. Keep our hope alive, a living hope, a hope in the resurrection. Well, 
The Hague family knows about Good Friday this year. They remember that day because they attended a funeral. Some of the people here in this congregation attended that funeral too. This puts a little bit of flesh and bones on this, how important that is. And you know what? Sorry, but chances are this will not be the last funeral the Hague family attends. You and I and all of us will need that continual reminder and comfort that because Christ lives, those who die in Christ will live again. That is a powerful comfort. The Christian faith, it's almost unbelievably, uh, it is unbelievable in the sense that we cannot believe it. Faith is a gift of God, but it's almost too good to be true. But those promises come from God himself. Charlotte, we are very happy today that you have learned to confess the Christian faith. And as you confess the Christian faith today, you do not stand alone. Your family is right next to you. Your friends and relatives are here to pray with you and for you as you confess the faith. Your pastors stand with you. Uh, folks who have been part of your training in 7th and 8th grade, Marion Letcher, David Buchman, Brian Flanagan have helped you uh, in your faith, and of course, mom and dad. We thank God for that help that you have received to learn to confess the faith, and we know that being faithful to the word of, and sacraments, God will keep you in that faith and confessing that faith until the very end. The confirmation verse that you have chosen is one, it's a very good one. Let me put it that way. It goes like this. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. This is really the essence of the Christian faith. To trust in the Lord with all our heart and despair of anything good within ourselves. We come before God trusting in him alone, not in our works, not in anything we are, think, say, or do. Lord, I'm a poor, miserable sinner. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. That is the essence of the Christian faith. And that comes across very powerfully in your confirmation verse. Trusting in the work and in the person of Jesus Christ and not in anything we are. We confess some things, as I said in the object lesson, that we do not fully understand. The Trinity... We don't fully understand the incarnation, how the fullness of God can live in a human being, in Jesus of Nazareth. But yet that is true. We don't fully understand how bread and wine can be connected with the true body and blood of Jesus Christ. We don't understand it, but we believe it because the word of God reveals it to us. These things are really too wonderful for us to comprehend fully, but we confess them because it's the truth. It's in the Word of God. Charlotte, God will continue to give you the strength to keep the promises that you will make before God and this Christian congregation as He continues to give you His body and blood, His Word, His sacraments. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the receiving of the offering.
The congregation may be seated, and I invite Charlotte to come forward and uh, for the rite of confirmation. And uh, I invite the congregation also to follow along uh, with the order of service on page 272 for confirmation. Uh, page 272, and join with Charlotte uh, in the answers, the responses to the questions that I, uh, that I will ask her uh, in remembrance of our baptism and the things that we have also learned to confess uh, along with her. Page 272 for the rite of confirmation. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give us answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. And then again, along with Charlotte, I invite the whole congregation to respond. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and to receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do for the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of, the Lord of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Charlotte Haig. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, Strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Charlotte, the confirmation verse you have chosen is from Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Praise God. The congregation may rise for prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. 
Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines. They may be, remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. For the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor, and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. You may go back to your seat. Thank you. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of mercy, when Thomas refused to believe, our Lord revealed himself so that Thomas might know the peace, joy, and comfort of our Lord's resurrection. Deliver from doubt and fear all who hesitate to believe the promise of your gospel and who seek a greater sign than our Lord's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of mercy, restore those who have wandered from the faith and are lost in error's maze. Rekindle the fire of the Spirit in the hearts of those whose faith has grown cold and restore the many who have lost their way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, continue to enlighten your church that she may shine the light of your gospel on all those who sit in darkness and death. Bless Matthew, our synod president, and Dale, our district president, our pastors, and all church workers and missionaries. Give them zeal for your word and for your house. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, come to the aid of the nations. Where there is war, bring peace. Where there is disaster and suffering, bring comfort and hope. Where there is injustice and cruelty, bring relief to the oppressed. Where there is violence and hatred, bring love. Bless especially our president, governor, mayor, and all elected and appointed civil servants in every level of government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, lead us to be good citizens and good neighbors. Help us to aspire to what is good and right, that we may show forth the virtue of your grace in our love for one another within the household of your church and those not yet of the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray that you'd be with those who have requested your prayers, who are in need of healing or other things. We pray especially for Alice Hildreth, for Rose Wigahopt, Damian Hartley, Karen Meyer, Ashley Goldhammer, Anna Mishnick, Roxy DeVries, Harvey Geidel, Linda Bittner, Tom Helling, Deanne Otten, Greg Dorr, Brendan Berger, Marlene Bosworth, Nick Barcher, George Edwards, and all those who we name in your, our hearts at this time. We pray that according to your good and gracious will, you would grant them healing, that your name would be glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are serving on the active forces of the armed forces of this country. We pray especially for Frank Luzak, Dylan Meyer, Megumi Nelson, Mason Fuhrer, Jesse Harder, and all those we name in our hearts. We pray that you would protect them as they protect us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are mourning. We pray for Lila Sexton at the death of her sister, and Carol Sambo at the death of her cousin, Leona Zundel, who passed away this week. We pray to be with this family and all those who mourn. 
giving them the comfort and confidence that because Christ lives, all those who die in Christ will live also. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, Lord of mercy, we give you thanks for answered prayer, for, for Leroy Hof, whom the Lord has restored to health. We thank you for being with Leroy and answering his prayer of health and healing. We also give you thanks for the marriage of, of Tyler Sullivan to Nikki Koenig yesterday. We pray that you would build this marriage up in love for each other and in faith towards you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, prepare us for your holy supper, that we may keep faithfully the body and blood of Christ that we receive in the bread and the cup, and so adorn the gospel with glad hearts and all godliness and holy living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, accept the tithes and offerings we bring as part of our worship and praise. All that we call our own has come from you, and we return to you what is already yours as an act of faith and gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of mercy, hear us in the prayers and supplications we bring to you. Give us all things needful for this body and life. Keep us, we pray, holy and blameless, that we may be ready to receive you when you come again in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. few announcements today. Uh, 
congratulations to, uh, to two of our third grade midweek students, uh, Zeke Brown and Kennedy Olson, for successfully reciting the baptism portion of the catechism uh, last week. Uh, I know we have a number of other students that have also done very well and successfully recited as well. I don't have a list of them here, but a number of, uh, a, a lot of our midweek students have done outstanding on memorizing their memory work and Sunday school as well, not just midweek, uh, this, this year. And so uh, keep up the good work there. Uh, please check the lost and found box in the North Narthex. We have many items in the box. Also, a black leather jacket has been found. I think that's the one with the keys in it still. A lot oh. of keys. And so yes. if you've been missing keys for a month, we found them. They're in the North Narthex. Um, we have surplus items located in the fellowship hall. Please go down and check these items out um, beneath the sanctuary here. You may purchase them for a small donation. Uh, Main Street Living Sunday is next Sunday, May 4th. We'll have a five-minute video on the mission and ministry of Main Street Living. Uh, and today's bulletin is an offering envelope for Main Street Living for you to bring back and use next week if you want to support this South Dakota ministry of our church. I know many of, many of, uh, many of our members uh, rely on Main Street Living, uh, the weekly video broadcast of sermons from pastors throughout the district and area. Both Pastor Tracer and I both participate in that and, and record and preach uh, sermons on that occasionally as well. Um, and so this Main Street Living Sunday has become the main um, fundraising effort for that organization, which is very close to closing. A couple of years ago, they had no money. And with Main Street Living Sunday, now they're able to, uh, God willing, continue to serve in this way. And so next Sunday, we'll do that. Uh, you'll find the offering envelopes in your bulletins. Thanks to the Women's Quartet for singing in the uh, divine service today uh, for the offertory, uh, the offering. Um, and, Pastor? And um, I'd like to present Charlotte with a cross from Thrivent Financial as a reminder of your confirmation. And uh, it's a beautiful pewter uh, cross with a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Also, yes, you're very welcome. Also, uh, I'd encourage the congregation if possible. Charlotte, we want you... I told Charlotte, well, depending on the weather, she could go outside and greet, greet the folks as they let, it's a little windy out there and a little cold as well. So I don't know what the wind chill is, but you'll just greet us. Please greet Charlotte if you're able uh, as, as you leave and encourage her in the faith. Thank you. Um, did I have one more? Nope, that was all. That's all the announcements. Any other announcements? That's it. Okay. God bless the rest of your day.